We are meeting two and a half weeks beyond Easter. According to the calendar of the Armenian Church, we are still during the Easter season. So, once again, I want to address you all with the Easter greeting of our church. Christos Haryav Imerelos. Christ is risen from the dead. Those are the words of joy. Those are the words of inspiration. And above all, those are the words of hope, of hope. In the past several months, I visited six parishes with an intent to listen to our people, especially the younger generation. My commitment was to listen, and I did. As I said, my goal was simply to listen. Listen the voices of our people. In the course of these parish visits, I met with our younger generation, with married couples, with young families, with seniors. I met with longtime parish leaders and relative newcomers. We spoke candidly about the challenges facing them and what they expect from their church. I heard success stories as well as concerns existing in our parishes. All the comments are recorded by R.P. Nakashian, and the report is prepared, it's ready. The report will be discussed at our next diocesan council meetings to develop a strategy with the help of our diocesan staff. Here are some of the comments I heard. An almost universal concern among our parishes has to do with dues-paid membership, as it was discussed also yesterday. This has been an issue for a long time. It doesn't present the real picture and doesn't encourage parishes to increase their dues-paid membership. I know many people who are very much engaged in a parish life, participate in every way, but are not dues-paid members. I also know some who are dues-paid members, but they are not active at all. And even I question whether they receive a communion during the day, during the year. <clears throat> we have to find a new approach. Of course, there is a great concern for attracting younger generation. But this long time concern is magnified today by the knowledge that the millennial generation is less interested in organized religion. Reaching them is much more challenging for the church. During last fall, when Vehapar was visiting New York City, I arranged a breakfast meeting with Cardinal Dolan. There were also some other Catholic bishops present during that breakfast meeting as well. During the meeting, we were talking about some of the challenges facing the church, overall the church. Cardinal Dolan mentioned that the millennial generation believe in God when you ask them, but they don't want to be associated with any organized religions or religious affiliation. And also other bishops present there, they were in agreement. And also, just two days ago or three days ago, during our clergy conference, we had a specialist from Villanova 
University in Pennsylvania. In his presentation, he also approved this reality in our society today. We have to work hard to do something to respond to this. There is also a concern about creating a more welcoming atmosphere in the church. Making a place where newcomers, non-Armenian spouses, even people from other backgrounds who want to worship among us all feel at home, valued, and acknowledged. Another critical concern that parishioners are very aware of is that the surrounding culture seems to be moving away from our traditional values. They are eager for the church to address modern social issues. They want to hear where the Armenian church stands regarding these issues. These are just few items I'm sharing after listening to our parishioners. Certainly, our people are thoughtful, intelligent, and serious in expressing their concerns. Some of their concerns are very hard to address. Issues such as suicide, drug, and sexual abuse, homosexuality, gender issues, addiction, and others. But we can't ignore them. Admittedly, some of these are issues our church cannot simply settle overnight. Our church at present may not even have the tools to address them. But what we can do is not discriminate. The key is love. Look at the example of Jesus. He was with everyone. He was accepting and being with everyone. Jesus was accused of being a friend of sinners. That was the word on the street in the first century Palestine. The pre precise phrase friend of sinners is mentioned twice in the Gospels in Matthew chapter 11 verse 19 and Luke chapter 7 verse 34. The naysayers of the day, the religious aristocracy criticized Jesus as a glutton and drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and Sinners, they called him this because it was true, wasn't it? He was a friend of sinners. Jesus himself said that he didn't come for the spiritually healthy, but for the sick. We read in the Gospel of St. Luke, the words of Jesus where it says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus spent so much time eating with sinners that the religious leaders accused him of being a sinner. But he wasn't. Jesus lived a perfect life, sinless life to take our place, pay for our sins and give us eternal, abandoned life. He didn't encourage or condone the sin of the sinners seated around his dinner table. He wasn't okay with it, but 
He was okay with them. He loved them, taught them, encouraged them, and built relationship with them. He did the same thing for them, then that he does for us now. I feel strongly that our pastors, the clergy who lead our churches, our parishes, are a key to, uh, to our efforts. And they are prepared for ministry in our culture and society today. Our commitment is to strengthen St. Nurses Armenian Theological Seminary. The new campus in Armonk marked a new beginning for the seminary's 50-year-old mission. Just as importantly, it marked a new beginning for the program of study being developed for those who feel the calling to serve in a meaningful ministerial capacity among the clergy as well as laity. The program of pastoral development is preparing priests for ministry in our culture and society today. We are also proud, as we see the list, when the chairman of the diocesan council was making his presentation yesterday, supporting several priests as they pursue higher education in university graduate programs. We have been pushing that. And again, I am very happy that our clergy are responding and they are very much eager to take this opportunity. And of course, we have been working to educate all our people, all ages. This year, we built on our efforts through a new Creative Ministries project in which all our departments collaborate. You will see more of that in the Creative Ministries presentation after my remarks. It represents an important way we are trying new methodologies to break out of the old forms and expand into promising new areas. As you will see, it's all very exciting. I am excited. And the results and the plans are very impressive. They inspire hope and express our hopes for the Armenian Church here in America, in our diocese. For all of this to come true, we need to work together. We need to work together in different ways. Sometimes your role can be as a listener. Sometimes you may need to reach out and support someone during a difficult, hard time. Other times, your role can be as simple as forwarding a link to a video or recommending it to your circle of friends and family. That in itself can create a massive effect in outreach. Other concerns are more difficult to deal with. Their solutions are harder to come by. But of course, we always have hope. The great gift our Lord has given us. With hope, what seems impossible can become possible. I imagine that this was the conviction that draw the disciples of Christ, that transform them from fearful souls hiding in the upper room into bold apostles of the good news of the resurrection, fearlessly 
traveling to the remote corners of the world, our homeland of Armenia among them. How would our people overcome adversity without this pre precise, precious gift of hope? Who is? I was thinking about this after watching the film, The Promise. At a critical moment in the film, as the Armenians wait for the dawn on Musadagh, the main character, Mikhail, confesses that he feels a darkness opening in his soul. He speaks of his desire for revenge, to pay back in destruction all the suffering that the Turks have inflicted upon him and his loved ones. But the woman, Anna, holds him back. Our revenge will be to survive, she says. By the end of the film, we see that the promise of the title has many meanings. For me, the most important is Mikhail's promise to raise and care for his orphaned niece and all the orphan children he helped escape. It's all symbolized in the wedding at the end where the survivors of the genocide commit to beginning a new generation. Again, that is the spirit of hope our survivors embodied. It's what marked the martyrs as saints. Yes, it seems there are many challenges today. However, there have been challenges always. Remember, beginning with Adam and Eve. There have been challenges since the early days of Christianity, in all Christianity, and for the Armenians. No moment in the history of the Armenian church was smooth. Remember the history. And indeed, it's essential, it, it is the essential story of our faith, of our Christian faith. From the stories of the martyrs to the stories of Armenia's conversion and the apostolic age, all the way back the story of the crucifixion, we learn that the mission of the church has never been easy. As Christ told his disciples, to follow him means to follow him in hard times and in good times. We follow him in times of comfort and peace as well as in times of difficulties, disasters. Christ is always with us. And what Christ promised us, that what he showed us is that hope is always there too. That is the gift to us and, we, and to forget that hope is in some sense to deny the miracle of his overcoming of the world. Embracing hope is to embrace Christ's presence in our lives. We need, above all, to pray a hotel together. That is surely the foundation of all our aspirations as a church. Indeed, prayer is what happened in the earliest moment of the church. In the upper room, where the disciples hide during the days after Christ's ascension. They too fell overburdened 
unsure of what to do next. But they knew how to pray. And they prayed as Jesus had taught them. And the rest was history. So, please join me as we pray together for the guidance of our Lord and for the growth of our church. O Lord, our God, Jesus Christ, in this season of your resurrection, we deeply feel your unconquerable power which overcame the world. We thank you for the strength we draw from your message of hope against all our causes for concern. We do not despair, for through you, O Christ, our people have been tested and emerged victorious. As we face our own trials and challenges, our faith stands firm, for you are always with us, beside us, giving us hope for our lives. In your name, we will shine with that hope in our parishes, in our diocese, in our churches as a whole. We will shine your light to our communities, to our country, to our homeland, and to the world. May your name be blessed forever and ever. Amen.